Hey guys, welcome back. This is Summer with 40 and the Fabulous. We are going to make some beef jerky today because I need snacks for my little car. So what I have got to use is I have grass-fed, um, humane certified stage four from Whole Foods. This is actually from White Oaks Past uh, White Oaks Farms, White Oaks Pastures. Uh, they're a really good farm, and um, so I try to get my beef from them. Actually, I only get it from them. If I can't get it from them, I do not get it um, typically because they do the best that they can to cause the least mistreatment to the animals. You know, unfortunately, if you eat meat, it's part of life, but I don't want the animals to unnecessarily suffer before they're killed, and I think White Oaks really tries to prevent that, so that is why I buy my meat from that form. So basically I'm going to take a pound of this ground beef and I'm going to mix in um, some cure and seasoning and I'm just using the actual packets of that because I don't want to chance anything going wrong with this. But I can't enjoy the beef jerky if I don't know like anything about the meat. Ugh, I really hate touching the meat. I'm going to have to wash my hands as soon as I finish this part because um, it really grosses me out. Okay. Okay, and I have a Nesco dehydrator and I really love the um, Nesco dehydrator. It's pretty awesome. I've made beef jerky. I've made sweet potato par um, chips and various things like that. And this sometimes comes out kind of clumpy like that. You just got to make sure you mix it up in there good. Um, this seasoning, it gets all hard in the packets, and um, it'll start mixing up. At least that's how it's been when I buy it, so I have to really just crush it up in there. Okay, and then one packet of the Jerky Cure. And again, I want to mix that up really well in there. So I'm just going to kind of get it all around the sides. And then I'm going to add cayenne pepper just because I like spicy. Before I actually mix. And I do like it really, really spicy, so. And then you're just gonna mix it really, really well. The cure seemed fine. I put lots and lots of cayenne. I'm going to add some black pepper. I'm going to add a little garlic. And then I'm going to add some pink Himalayan sea salt. Try to mix that up in there as well as I can without getting my hands in this again because I just can't um, dig my hands <laughs> back in here. And you know, maybe I should have like banged the packet more or something before I poured it in here. I don't know. Either that or it was just old and nasty. But I do think that I've probably got the cure 
mixed up really well and that is the most important thing. Okay, and then I've got a jerky gun that does two slices at one time. And so that is what I'm going to be using. And it makes it pretty easy. So you basically just fill this up with the meat. And hopefully it will hold the whole pound. I really can't remember because it's been a while since I've actually made it. It was really last year. Um, the last time I made beef jerky. Well, not last year, but the year before. <laughs> really, technically. So, But I'm just kind of shoving it down in there to see if I can um, try to fit this whole pound in here and not have to come back and refill it. I think it's supposed to hold a pound. Raw meat is really gross to me, but this Nesco Dehydrator makes really great beef jerky. And you know what you're getting. You know what kind of beef you're getting. You know where it came from. And all that kind of stuff. Nowadays, you don't even know if it came from the United States half the time when you buy stuff at the store. So, when I know it came from a small farm in Georgia, I'm happy with that. Well, I say a small farm. I think they've grown quite a bit since they started being a Whole Foods customer. I mean, a Whole Foods supplier. But So, then you just um, screw this on. And I'm going to wash my hands real quick and put this bowl in the sink and then we'll move right over to the dehydrator and start going. shrink up quite a bit. because I do want it to dehydrate well and I don't want to be cooking more than other ones etc so just gonna adjust it around a little like that we'll do the same down here it doesn't really matter if it pulls apart a little it's just gonna be a smaller piece then And these will shrink up a good bit, like probably half the size that they are currently. Main thing is I just don't want them overlapping. So, we don't have much left in here. Let's see what's going to come out. Okay, so, we're going to have that and that and then I'm going to take this off because there will be some just left in here and I will just pull that off and put it 
on the dehydrator. It just won't be in a little beef jerky shape. Her thing. I will literally just flatten it out as much as I can get it. You know, I got it on my rings. And like that. Okay. Now I'm just going to put these empty trays back over it. Actually, I'm going to put... them under it and one over it just because I don't want the thing sitting too short because it does get hot. Alright. And for meats and jerky, it's going to be on 160. So I'm turning that all the way up. And then I will bring you guys back in between to show you it does have to stay. Okay, like this is the aftermath of the beef jerky. I thought I was videoing earlier and I was just taking a picture. So this is what the dehydrator looks like. Basically, I let this just dehydrate overnight. And you can see all that grease um, from the meat that's on here. So you just want to wipe all that grease off of your beef jerky as you're storing it. Just so the extra fat is not on there. And because that extra fat will cause it to go rancid quicker. Um... I don't know, honestly, how long this lasts, because I've only ever had it for a couple of weeks, but um, it's cured and everything. I think um, as long as you have the cure, it should be okay. But anyway, that is the mess.